So I've got loads of patching to do around the place. Some of it I can use bonding or backing plaster to fill. Um, but some of the larger areas I'm fitting a little bit of plasterboard there. And here is one of those areas, and I know exactly what's happened here. Although there's always a bit of spring in the wall with the lathe and plaster wall, here there's a bump, and I'm almost certain that's where the electricians have put the box in for the light switch in the other room. And it's pushed it out. And as soon as you disturb one small area, it kind of gets worse and worse. So we're going to be carefully cutting out a section here. And you obviously don't have to do perfectly level lines. I just find that if you do that, it's a lot easier when you come to cut the board to fit in there. Okay, ideally you want to try and line up with a stud. Um, I'm just saying with the stud here, but that's fine. And I want to come across here just so my board ends on a stud as well and then you want to do your best to just carefully remove the section you can spray down a little bit of water as you go just kind of cut down the dust a little bit you can get a piece out like that it's fine otherwise you really want to get a dust mask on and uh, take it out in big pieces As soon as you take out an area, you tend to weaken around it. Or if you disrupt it by drilling through it or punching through it, you end up um, kind of, it just gets worse and worse. So that's why I'm just carefully taking out a kind of neat section without disrupting the bit around it. When it's the line plaster off the top of the last, I find that the 9.5mm works really well. Um, it's probably a millimetre shy of the surface which means when the whole wall is skimmed or when you patch this area it comes up perfect um, whereas if I used a 12 and a half here it would stick out if I was cutting some lime plaster off a brick wall I tend to find that's a little bit thicker and you can get away with using a thicker plasterboard okay just write my measurements on here Don't get me wrong, this is certainly not a conservation way to go. This is more your DIY or you know renovation way to go. If you were uh, in a listed building or some uh, very old conservation project, then of course you would want to stick to using lime. And if you're on an outside wall, an exterior wall, that's another reason why you don't really want to be using plasterboard. If it's a solid wall. And check it for size. Like I said, this is ideal because it means we can skim in, you know, if there's a little bit of a gap there because um, I really want to make sure there's a smooth transition so I use some bonding to, uh, to smooth that out. Mark on the adjacent wall where my studs are so that I know exactly where I want to put my screws and also you can screw into the lats. If you find nice solid lats you can screw into those so mark up a few of those. A few more screws than you'd ordinarily use, but you want to make sure any fixing point you can get one in there. But that's certainly a lot more solid than the rest of the wall now. So next, I so just get some PVA, watered down PVA, just to get rid of any of the uh, the dry bits. Right, I've got about nine or ten of these to do now, so. Um, I thought I'd just show you how I'm doing it. So if you're ever, you know, stuck for a, uh, a fix on a lab and plaster wall, it's a good way to go. If it's set back in a bit um, and you're going to need to build it out, it's a good idea to put some scrim 
just over the joins, uh, just to give it a little bit of structure and something for the plaster to cling onto. Next, I'm just going to put a second coat of PVA on there, PVA and water, um, just to make sure that this plaster dries slowly and it's not going to get the moisture sucked out of it. And I'm just literally going to cover over the whole of our plasterboard here because it's set back by about three or four mil. And I want to make sure that when we skim everything, that it's going to blend in. With the bonding first, that should help give us a, a nice smooth wall overall. As you can tell, I'm not a plasterer. can do the bits that nobody sees. And our very last job, once it's a little, got a little bit of firmness on to it, is just to run some grooves down it. And you only want to do this if you're skimming anyway. Most of the walls are beginning to dry already. So now I ended up with these really nice smooth walls. Right up to where we've capped off the top. So believe it or not, we're over a year and a half on from uh, when I originally filmed that video and just never put it out. Um, but this is the wall where you saw me doing that patch to start with. So just to give you an idea, and it's quite handy having the daylight coming in, so you should be able to pick up any, you know, if there were any imperfections. But we had the whole wall skimmed, so that meant that I wanted to get it within a millimetre or so, um, kind of flat with the rest of the wall. And then, of course, it was um, scrim taped anyway, and then it just meant that then when it was all skimmed over, we had a seamless flat surface. And once it was painted, you wouldn't ever know really that it was there. So as you saw, there were some smaller holes which using bonding or a backing plaster of some sort, you can just fill those straight in, just make sure you push it in between the laths. Of course, if you're not planning on redecorating or re-skimming the whole wall, you could just do the same thing if you had a damaged section, cut it out, fit the plasterboard in there, and then once it's all nice and uh, fixed in there and secure, you could just feather it out with some drywall compound um, and just you know build it up in a couple of layers and then feather it out probably give it a little sand back once it's nice and dry and then you could decorate it like the rest of the wall. Just another little hurdle you come across when you're renovating an old house or living in an old house and um, so you know if you do have these sort of uh, more delicate building structures such as lath and plaster or, or lime plasters on walls then it's a really easy way to, to patch it and fix it. And the same can be done on ceilings of course in exactly the same way. So my only Advice is, don't do it on an external wall. Um, if you've got solid walls and you're trying to keep things breathable because it's obviously not, plasterboard is not breathable, you'd want to uh, ideally use a lime backing plaster or lime hemp or something like that. And we've done other videos on that. So there's one more video from the era of the Hall Sales Landing Project, which I've got left, which is talking about ceiling paints and a couple of tips that we've kind of found out as we've been uh, working through the project but apart from that that's it hope you found that useful subscribe for more videos and to follow us through all the projects we've got going on uh, stay tuned the next video I think is going to be a garden video but then there's plenty coming this week uh, with some smaller projects and also some big plans including the van so thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time okay so believe it or not we're over a year and a half on from that video that I filmed. <laughs> it's not a kid, it's an outfit. <laughs> You're on. None the wider. Don't work with children, animals, or wives. <laughs>